Big cats are undoubtedly some of the most charismatic of living animals, exuding both fearsome power and elegance all at once, and none better exemplify this than the iconic tigers. This series, The Year of the Tiger, will be covering the currently agreed upon six extant subspecies, with them being discussed alphabetically on a daily basis, beginning with this video on the Bengal tiger and ending on the Sumatran tiger. I hope you enjoy. Bengal tigers are the quintessential and most well associated with the oval group we know as tigers, with them as a whole ranking as one of the world's most charismatic examples of living megafauna. White tigers are also known to occur on rare occasions in the wild from time to time, being a result of recessive leucism. Males and females have an average total length of 270 to 310 centimeters and 240 to 265 centimeters respectively. The standard weights for males range from 175 to 260 kilograms, while that of females range from 100 to 160. What's interesting is that Bengal tigers are consistently the largest tiger subspecies, being generally larger than the Siberian tiger, which is generally thought of as being bigger due to living in colder conditions and appearing larger due to their bulkier coats. While the largest tiger reliably recorded was indeed a Siberian and or Amur tiger, an individual by the name of Jaipur, who was a captive animal who measured up to 3.32 metres in length and weighing around 423 kilograms. This was an exceptional case, with there also being the factor of them being in captivity. The average in the wild is noted to be similar, and in many cases, Bengal tigers outweigh Siberian ones consistently, potentially down to the former, having larger gene pools and generally more prey access. Interesting to note is that tigers from the Bangladesh Sundarbans are very small compared with other populations, with three tigresses monitors in the region having a mean weight of 76.7 kilograms, which could be down to the combination of intense, intraspecific competition, the smaller size of prey available, and alongside skull differences coupled to the lower body weights, may indicate that they may have adapted to the unique conditions of the mangrove habitat. Bengal tigers are defined by three distinct mitochondrial nucleotide sites and 12 unique microsatellite alleles that help to distinguish them from other subspecies. The pattern of genetic variation in them also seems to indicate that they first arrived in India approximately 12,000 years ago, with this recent history of them in the region being consistent with the lack of tiger fossils from India prior to the late Pleistocene and the absence of them from Sri Lanka, which was separated from the subcontinent by rising sea levels in the early Holocene. A large majority of the population survives in India, although there are some in China, Bangladesh as mentioned, and Nepal as well with them thriving in dry and wet, deciduous forests, grasslands and mangrove forests. Being apex predators, Bengal tigers target a wide range of both small and large prey animals, mostly targeting large ungulates like cheetah, sambar and gar, as well as wild boar, munchak and grey langurs. They will also hunt and kill other predators such as leopards, dole and bears, although such occurrences are usually done under periods of stress considering how formidable a lot of these animals are. They generally do not do so, but extraordinary cases of them killing Indian elephants and rhinos have also happened. Breeding-wise, they reach sexual maturity between 3 and 5 years of age, with animals being otherwise solitary outside of breeding, which can occur at any time of the year. Although in regions with more tropical climates, it happens more frequently during the periods between November and April, when temperatures are colder. Males range further from their native home range after leaving their mothers, and afterwards, when they reach breeding age, will attempt to contact nearby females through deep vocalizations, as you can see here. While being the most common subspecies, with an estimated 2,500 in the wilds, they are currently threatened by numerous factors that have meant their recovery from near extinction is a precarious one. Poaching continues to be a large problem, with their coats and various other body parts like their bones still being highly prized in some international markets, both legal and illegal. Habitat loss has also led to extensive fragmentation and reduced gene flow, which has led to increasing conflicts with people, as they will occasionally prone livestock and people if they are unable to target their typical prey due to either injury or old age. Extensive conservation efforts have managed to boost their numbers, although they still remain as endangered, and their future is still a precarious one. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, 
And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.